move on to a special discussion, where are the jobs? That's the question troubling the average Indian worker and the answer isn't heartening if the latest statistics are to be believed. According to data from the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy, former jobs have seen a drop of 67 lakh jobs in the January to April period of this year from the same period last year. Remember, majority of India's population is still employed in the informal sector, so such a drop in jobs in the formal sector which already employs a small portion of the population is of course concerning. The total number of employed people in the country in the January to April period of this year has seen a drop of 15.3 lakh when compared to the September to December period last year. Joining in now to discuss uh, this further is the MD and CEO of CMIE, Mahesh Vyasa. Mr. Vyasa, always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, the numbers that you as CMIE are putting out are concerning. Can you take us through the key numbers that we need to remember which paints the jobs picture and what lies ahead for us? Well, the last uh, two articles I wrote on uh, unemployment um, have two important factors in them. The first one points out of the loss of jobs. So in the first article, I point out that the total number of jobs or total employed persons, people who claim that they are employed, that number dropped uh, from about 404.5 million people to 403 million people uh, in a span of just four months. So the September-December 2016 survey uh, showed that 404.5 million people were employed. And in the Jan's April 2017 survey, we found that 403 million people claimed that they were employed. So that means that on a net basis, 1.5 million persons dropped out of uh, people claiming to be employed. Now this is the first time that we have seen a fall in the number of people stating that they are employed. The number of people employed has been rising slowly because the total workforce increases and the number of people taking up all kinds of jobs, whether it is uh, formal or informal jobs, do keep increasing at a very slow pace on a net basis. But in the Jan, April 2017, we saw this drop and that is big. 1.5 million people being out of employed status is a big fall. Well, these are staggering numbers you're giving us, uh, Mr. Vyas. Uh, uh, could there possibly be a tracking error that perhaps also partly explains this huge drop that you're telling us? So there will always be a margin of error over there. Uh, but the margin of error is extremely small because the survey is very large. Uh, this is the largest survey uh, conducted to estimate unemployment. So we survey of the order of 165,000 households, uh, which involves of the order of 600,000 adult people. So the sample is really very large and it is very widespread. It runs from Kashmir down to Kanyakumari and from Gujarat to Assam. We cover every state and every small neighborhood. So, so the survey is very large. The, the probability of the error being large is extremely low. So I think the number is quite reliable. So 1.5 million jobs could very well be 1.6 million jobs or it could be 1.4 million jobs that were lost. But um, I, don't, I don't think that there is any survey uh, which is larger than this or more current than this to give us an idea about employment. For example, the government survey is 2011-12 and the sample size is close to 220,000. So that's a much smaller sample and um, is very dated. Fair enough. I get those numbers, Mr. Vyas, but can you take us through what you think led to this significant drop of 15 lakh jobs that we've seen? So what's important is also the fact that uh, the jobs being lost are in the formal sector. So, um, you know, anyone says he's employed because in India, we, uh, a large number of people cannot afford to remain unemployed. So they take up any kind of jobs and claim to be employed. So you could be, for example, a daily wage earner, you could be an agricultural laborer, but if the farm sector isn't doing well, or if the construction sites ain't doing well, what do you do? You cannot say I'm unemployed because you can't afford to remain unemployed. So you become, um, uh, you become a small trader uh, selling some candy um, outside a school. And um, you then say that, okay, I'm selling candy outside school and I'm employed. So 
What is important is have jobs in a formal sense increased or not. When we say that we are going to give, let us say, uh, 20 million jobs or 2 crore jobs or some such thing, what we mean to say that there will, these jobs will be white collar jobs or blue collar jobs, industrial workers or office goers, those jobs over one year period have actually fallen by 7 million. And um, what has increased is people who are small traders and hawkers. Agricultural laborers have gone down. Industrial workers have also gone down. What has increased is those people who are self-employed. So there is a bigger crisis even beyond the 1.5 million jobs I'm talking about. Right, Mr. Vas, since you're laying emphasis on, on the formal sector, so let's talk about formal jobs. You're saying that between 2016 and 2017, 67 lakh jobs, or 6.7 million jobs in the formal sector have been lost. Am I right? Right. That's right. You're right. You're right. So a very large fall. So we had about 92 million uh, people employed in the organized sector in Jan, April 2016. And that number has fallen by 7 million over a period of one year. Now this organized number is much larger than what you'll see in the government statistics of 2011-12. That will show only 30 million in the organized sector. That's a very small number. It's not representative. Okay, fair enough. So even though the total jobs have increased between 2016 and 2017, the formal jobs are down significantly. Can you pinpoint the specific areas as to why you think that has happened and what's the option here going ahead? That's right. Because people cannot afford to remain unemployed. So like I said, you could be a construction site worker, you lose your job, you start becoming a candy hawker outside some small place. Or you become a cigarette hawker outside some office and you claim that, okay, you've got some employment. You could be a helper on a tea stall um, and um, you still call yourself employed. So these are not jobs in what we understand as jobs. When we say that the economy needs to provide jobs to people, to young people coming out of schools and colleges, these are not the jobs we are talking about. So while there is an increase in the total number of people claiming to be employed, I think we should be very, very careful in looking at these numbers, that this is misleading. What is important is that we require those formal jobs wherein a person goes to a factory to work, goes to a workshop or goes to a shop or a mall or an office. Those jobs are falling. Point taken, Mr. Vyas. But in, fair enough, point taken. And, and in fact, in conclusion then, what is the big takeaway from this? What could be possibly the long-term economic implication of this? Because the numbers that you're citing and the kind of uh, precipitous decline in the formal jobs, this is also going to have an impact on, on the purchasing power uh, you know, of our consumers. And for the Indian economy, which is sort of boosted and supported by domestic consumption, we're also talking about a hit uh, in, in our economic growth story in the years ahead. So there is um, there is there seems to be there, there seems to be a little um, divergence or a significant divergence happening in the economy. You have the upper five percent of the economy of the households that seem to be doing very well. They are likely to be people in the organized sector, more importantly in the government sector. So you have a large government workforce which is doing pretty well. You will have a finance commission handing out them more. I'm sure we can comfortably say today that um, inspectors, including tax inspectors, have become a lot more powerful today than they were in the past. These, this government employee set, uh, government includes judiciary, police people, armed forces, bureaucracy, the works, is doing pretty well. And they have a larger savings that goes into buying more cars and car sales are doing well. And the stock market is doing well thanks to this, this, this group. It is the lower section, it is the lower 90%, 95% that is stressed out. So the, the lower 90, 95% is getting worse and the upper 5% to 10% is actually doing much, much better. They are seeing the savings doing very well. Whether it is in provident fund getting 8% or so returns tax-free or it is in the stock markets giving you very good returns again tax-free. 
So this is a perfect place for Thomas Piketty to check out how these wage earners are moving differently compared to the daily wage laborers. There is a big divergence under play over here. All right, Mr. Vyas, many thanks for joining in on this show. Uh